happy Friday. Welcome to today's pet podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Roberta Westbrook, and thank you for joining us here at the Campus for All Animals, the Houston SPCA. We have great information for you today. Today, I really want to talk about how to travel with your pet. The holidays are here. We're so excited and our pets are part of our family. And oftentimes we like to take them wherever we go. If we're going to visit family and friends in another city or sometimes another state, why not take the pets along? It can be a wonderful way to enjoy the holidays with your pet. But we certainly want to talk about how you can do that safely and how it is the best for you and for your furry four-legged friend. So today, before we get into that information, I want to introduce you to one of the wonderful dogs that we have available for adoption. This here is Duke. Duke is a young adult male. He's about two years old. He came to us because he was lost. He was lost on the streets. And we're going to talk about this a little bit later, um, but we were not able to find Duke's original family. We believe that Duke had a family, um, but we were unable to reunite Duke with his original family. And we'll talk about how we can make sure that we are able to reunite lost pets with their family members and how to keep your pets safe over the holidays. So this is Duke. He's such a good boy. He would make a great family pet. He's very well behaved. So come on down to our campus this weekend. Please bring your family, bring your friends. Um, and what you can do is you don't need an appointment to come look at all of our adoptable pets. You can just come right on down. All you need is a face covering to come inside the building. We have wonderful adoption counselors and adoption team that can help match you with the best pet for your family. Um, and we're happy to help you through that process. We have puppies kittens, dogs, cats. We even have some rabbits available. So come on down and join us. So start thinking about your questions related to traveling with your pet. And I will start. The first thing when it comes to traveling with your pet is once you've decided that you're going to travel with your pet, one of the things that you need to make sure that you have is accurate current records of your pet's vaccinations. Oftentimes to travel with your pet, if you're going across state lines, especially, you need to have your pet examined by a veterinarian, usually within 10 days of travel, so that the veterinarian can make sure that your pet is healthy enough for travel. So if you are planning to take your pet somewhere with you on Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, in that time period right before travel, about 10 days before, make an appointment with your veterinarian. Make sure that your pet is current on their vaccinations. In addition, make sure you, that, that your pet has permanent identification or semi-permanent permanent identification like a microchip, a rabies tag, a collar with your name and your pet's name and a phone number to contact you in the event that your pet's lost. So Duke here actually had a microchip when he came to us. A microchip is a permanent little device that's implanted under the skin in our pets, right on the back of the neck between the shoulder blades. And it's a really small chip that allows your pet to be located um, whenever he or she gets lost. And we can scan the animal for a microchip we can call the microchip company and we can get your information and reunite you with your lost pet. Duke had a microchip, but the information on Duke's microchip was not accurate, it was not current. And so if you know that your pet has a microchip, please make sure that before you're traveling, you call the microchip company, update your phone number, update your address, update your name, whatever you need, so that in the event of an emergency or an accident and your pet gets lost, we are able to reunite your pet with you. Does anybody have any questions to start? So maybe just starting with large breed dogs, since we've got our special Duke here. Um, what are your thoughts of um, giving animals, med pets medication before they get on a plane or they get in a car? Absolutely, giving your pets medication. This is important because ideally you would know whether or not your pet is a good traveler. And by good traveler, I mean, do they enjoy it? Or is it a source of anxiety for them? 
Most importantly, if you already know that your pet does not do well in a car or does not do well on a plane or you're unsure, you may want to contact your family veterinarian and get some medication to help calm your pet during travel, particularly if that travel is gonna be extended for many hours. So short car rides, you may know that your pet is okay with short car rides, but if this is gonna be you know, six, seven, eight, nine hour drive over the holidays, that can be a little bit stressful. And you may wanna have some options available to keep your pet calm. So there are certain things that you can administer to your pet under a veterinarian supervision. So make sure you clear this with your family veterinarian, but there are some over-the-counter medications and there are some prescription medications um, that are gonna be a little bit more tailored to, to your personal pet. And if your pet does need medication, you wanna make sure that you have enough for the trip there and the trip back. So make sure that you're uh, communicating that to your veterinarian, how long you're gonna be gone, when you're gonna be leaving, when you're gonna be coming back so you have an adequate amount of medication. So right now, Duke is exploring a travel crate that we have. <laughs> so he is exploring that. Again, if you're traveling with your pet, it's a good time now to try to get them used to a travel carrier because let's talk about traveling with your pets in a car. If you are traveling with your pet in a car, loose pets, unrestrained pets in the car can be very dangerous, not only for the pet, because if there's an accident, your pet may you know, be thrown from the vehicle. We don't want that to happen, but it can also be a distraction and it can be dangerous for you as the driver. So I've been there. Listen, I've done that. Let me be honest. When I was just, you know, a young, you know, young teenager and I had a cat and I would let my cat ride with me in, in the car and she loved to sit on my lap and she sometimes loved to sit on the dashboard right at the front windshield. And I thought it was adorable. I really did. I thought people are going to think this is so cool. They're going to drive by me. They're going to see my cat sitting in the window. And she's so cute. And I thought it was I thought that was a cute thing to do. But as I became more educated, I realized how dangerous that could be and that I, I could potentially be putting um, my cat in danger and me in danger if I got distracted by watching her kind of, you know, roam around the car. So please try to restrain your pets. There are seat belts that you can get. There are certainly soft carriers like the one that you see in front of me. And then there are also hard carriers like the one that you saw Duke coming in and out of um, that you can safely secure your pet during travel with. Um, so please consider during doing that. Um, your pet can still enjoy the car ride and even the fresh air in the safety of your car because it's the other thing we love to do, right? We love to have our pets roll the window down and dogs especially, they like to stick their muzzle, their face out, out the window and get the wind blowing through their hair and it's cute and they seem to really enjoy it. We should be aware that there's sometimes dangers associated with that. For example, flying debris. So when your pet's face is out the window, we oftentimes don't know if there's flying debris that could injure them coming into their face, coming into their eyes. The wind, in addition, can dry out the surface of the eyes, the corneas, and sometimes that can create irritation as well. So something to be aware of, again, if you're traveling with your pet, doing that, you know, at short periods of time or at low speeds, you know, might be acceptable. But if you're, you know, going 80 or 90 miles on the, on the highway and your pet's having their head out the window, that may not be the safest thing. So let's consider that. Does anyone else have any questions about traveling with their pets? Yes. Yeah, so um, I think Lexi had a, a follow-up question. She was wondering, um, what can she do outside of anxiety? What should she do if her, 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 she sees, she finds, she discovers that her dog is car sick? Yeah, that's such a great question. What do you do if your dog is car sick and maybe you didn't know? So if your pet has ever been to the veterinarian before, you may have taken your pet in a car. You might already know whether or not they are car sick or, or not. There is medication that we can prescribe for your pet, over-the-counter and prescription medication that we can give to your pet to help reduce that car sickness. So that's one thing, treating that car sickness with medication. Another thing that you can do is try not to have your pet travel on a full stomach. So we like to have them stick with their routine during travel, 
But if you know your pet is car sick, you may want to feed them more than two hours before the travel. It usually takes about two hours for that food to get uh, moving from the stomach down into the intestinal tract. Um, sometimes it can take longer, but um, if you wait about two hours before travel, that might help to settle their stomach a little bit better. So timing of meals and then working with your veterinarian to get some prescription medication to help reduce that that motion sickness and that car sickness. Good question. Um, so Stacy had a, a question about traveling um, in airports with pets. Um, what can she do to prepare her uh, to be around other animals that could be, um, they could cross paths in the airport and how she should handle that, prepare for that? So traveling with your pet in an airport, uh, the first thing is, as I mentioned earlier, make sure your pet is current on vaccinations. You never know, again, how many animals you're going to be coming into contact with and whether or not they're current on vaccinations. So we just want to uh, take responsibility for, for our own pets and let each person take responsibility for their pet. Make sure they are fully vaccinated. The second part is contact the airline that you're going to be traveling with may, uh, well ahead of time. So every airline has their own travel restrictions for pets. Some of them have size restrictions. Some of them have restrictions on the size of the crate that you can travel with. For example, this soft crate here can be used for small dogs and cats. Some airlines only allow small dogs and cats because this size travel bag will fit under the seat in front of you, just like a carry-on luggage, and that's okay. Um, and some airlines may not allow larger, um, larger pets in the cabin with you. They may require that larger pets be stored with the cargo underneath the plane. And this is an additional consideration too. Do you want your pet to travel with the cargo underneath the plane? Oftentimes there's no problem with this. Pets can travel safe in the cargo area of a plane, but it is more risky. Sometimes pets can become more stressed. They can become overheated. They can have injury and no one will be aware of that until the flight has ended. And so it's something to be aware of. Please call the airline well ahead of time uh, for your travel plans and make sure you get their travel restrictions. Particularly, you know, one tip is if you have what we call a brachycephalic breed of dog, a brachycephalic breed of dog is one that has a very short muzzle and snout. Those would be dogs like bulldogs, shih tzus, sometimes lhasa apsos, pugs, Boston terriers, those dogs with short um, muzzles and noses because they overheat very easily and they can get stressed really easily if they're not able to move air well through their, through their passage, their airway. And so you wanna make sure that those pets do not travel underneath the plane uh, with the cargo uh, because they may not be able to get as much uh, clean airflow as we'd like them to have. And it's more difficult for them to manage that. So those are some things to consider with your pet traveling on a plane. Um, Any other questions? Yeah, so as far as road trips go, how often should you stop? I mean, we know we need to stop and take breaks. How often should you stop for, say, a large dog versus a small dog to get a rest break to, to keep them from being restless? That's a great question. How often should you stop on a long car ride? And I would say somewhere between every two to six hours. They need to stretch their legs. If you have them restrained in a crate or a carrier, then again, they're gonna feel a little bit tight after a while. They're gonna to wanna to stretch their legs. They may need to relieve themselves. And it would be great for you and for the pet if every few hours, every two to six hours, you stop to give your pet a little bit of a walk and a potty break, maybe drink some water. So drinking water can be challenging too. Try to invest in a collapsible water bowl. You can get those from your local pet store. And that's that way you can um, fold it up and and use it and then fold it back up and tuck it away whenever you are traveling. So about every two to six hours is appropriate. What are some recommendations on, if I know I'm taking a road trip and I've got a week, what are some things that I can do in advance to prepare for my pet? Um, I know you had mentioned the crate, so just so they are ready for it. In advance of travel, what do you need to get? You need to make sure that you have a carrier. You need to make sure that you have a a tight fitting, not overly tight, but a snug fitting harness and leash. You need to make sure your pet is current on vaccines and has a rabies tag and or a microchip. 
And you need to make sure that you have the comforts that your pet would have at home, a bed, some toys, their food, their medication, a way to feed and water them during travel. So those would be kind of the top things that you need to have to prepare in the days following up to your trip. So um, leading into that, Stacy wants to know if she is going, um, say, out of state, does she need to bring bottled water or water from home if she's going to another state? Will that upset the dog's stomach? Oh, that's a good question. Having changes in water and the water content between cities and states, and could that cause any GI upset? It certainly has the potential to. Um, I'm in favor of bottled water just because it's easily accessible. We often have it in our in our cars and our purses. We have bottled water, and so you can put a lid on it. You know, it's safe, um, and you know exactly where that's coming from. I think it would be a great idea. Uh, to carry some bottled water with you. If you have been to that state regularly, maybe your pet has been there before and you haven't had trouble, then you should, probably shouldn't have any trouble uh, now. But particularly for the car ride, I would have bottled water available for, for ease and convenience. And Emma was, was, wanted to know, if she, while she's on the road, um, if there is an emergency um, with their pet, say their, their pet, it, um, gets out and um, injures their leg or something like that. Should she have, or just she doesn't want to be a helicopter pet parent, but as she's logging her route, knowing where the nearest pet hospital or the nearest veterinarian office is, just in case. How smart is that to do? That is a wonderful plan to have mapped out. If you are traveling far, you know, if you're just going a couple of hours, you know, two hours and you don't plan on stopping, you know, you could maybe consider not doing that. But what if you're traveling 10 or 12 hours and you're concerned? Even more importantly, I'm glad you brought that up. What if this is your pet's first time traveling and first time on medication? Because sometimes if it's their first time on medication, you may not know how their body is going to respond to it. And so if you need veterinary care, you have a question about that, uh, knowing where veterinary hospitals are on that route would be a great idea, particularly emergency hospitals, because they're going to be open 24 hours oftentimes. Um, and so they may be more easily accessible. Yeah, great idea. And how prepared would you be? Mm -hmm. Great idea. Um, so... Um can they, Jane wants to know if she can give her, speaking of a medication, can she give her, her dog on um, Benadryl? Yes, Benadryl is actually very safe for pets. They can take it uh, the same day that we can. We do have to dose it according to body weight, though. So this is where your veterinarian is going to come into play. Your veterinarian needs to make sure that the amount that's given is appropriate for your pet's size and weight. And there are different formulations of Benadryl. So there's liquid Benadryl, there are tablets, there are capsules, and each formulation is a different strength. And this is what's important about not just using medication without consulting a veterinarian, because each formulation has a different concentration or strength available. And so a capsule may not be the same strength as a tablet, and that's not the same strength as a teaspoon necessarily. So please contact your family veterinarian, but Benadryl is a great option to try. And if you know you're traveling, talk to your veterinarian about trying some of these medications on a trial basis at home so that you know whether it's gonna work and you know if your pet's gonna have any abnormal reactions. And then if it doesn't work, they can try something else before your actual trip. Dr. Westbrook, do you have any thoughts on why we shouldn't travel with our pets? Are there any circumstances we should just go ahead and get a neighbor or a dog sitter? If you have an elderly pet that we are concerned you know, about uh, their stress level, um, getting around easily. If you're going to be kind of hustling and bustling and you're going to be, you know, moving around a lot. If you have a geriatric pet that may be a little bit more stressed out, it might be best to find a pet sitter who can come to your home. Or perhaps you can leave your pet with a trusted family member in the city. And that way we can reduce your pet stress level. And you know, even aside from geriatric pets, if you just have a pet that you know has anxiety in general, travel anxiety in general, if there is someone willing to come to your home, walk, feed, water, spend time with your pet, that's a great option. There are so many resources out there for in-home pet sitters and walkers um, and, and 
you know, those kinds of those kinds of people who can really help keep your pet comfortable in his or her home. That's a great option um, because traveling with your pet, if you haven't done it often, it can be stressful to prepare for that. So consider having someone visit with your pet in your own home or leaving your pet with a friend or family member in the city. Uh, that might be a great alternative. Um. I think Shelly wanted to know about um, specifically the carriers. You see, you've got a soft carrier here. Is there a safety, is one better than the other hard versus soft in terms of safety when you're traveling in the car? Yeah. Essentially, uh, no, they're both fine. We tend to see a lot of cats in the soft carriers, mm -hmm. and but they can be used for small dogs as well. Um, they certainly are a little bit easier to you know, move around the soft carriers are. So just putting them on your shoulder like a purse or a duffel bag works really well, as opposed to the rigid carriers that might be a little bit hard to maneuver, but they're both safe. They're both fine. Oftentimes, you know, the carriers have the mesh so the pets can see out really well. Um, there's even those cute little backpacks you can get to put your cat or your dog in. So there's lots of creative ways to, to travel with your pet. All of them are, are fine. Make sure you're trying them out to see which one your pet feels the most comfortable in, because that's really what matters. If they're comfortable, they're probably not going to be stressed. And a stressed pet means risk of injury and disease. And we don't want that. We want them to be happy and less stressed as they travel with us for the holidays. And what do you think Duke should travel in, just based on how he looks? You know, Duke is such a handsome boy. Look at that. And you can't even tell that Duke is about 75 pounds. He's he's a big boy, but, you know, he's nice and compact, and, and he's, a, he's a great dog. He would probably do best, though, in a rigid crate. Mm -hmm particularly because in a in they these soft carriers like that you put on your shoulder are not gonna they're not gonna have one big enough for Duke um, but you need something sturdy that's going to be able to withstand his movement so Duke would need more of a rigid structured crate that we have here and as you can see he's gonna want you to bring his toys <laughs> his, he's gonna want to play he's very treat motivated too so make sure you have those things that those creature comforts that your pet is going to uh, going to need on travel. So come by and visit Duke and all of our other pets here at the Houston SPCA. Visit with our large dogs. So look how look how playful Duke is. What a wonderful dog. Come visit with some of our larger dogs. You know, initially some people think, you know, I'm not sure that I want a large dog. I want a little dog to, to sit in my lap. No, Duke will be a lap dog for you. You know, you can you can do it. So come on down and visit us. Thank you for joining us. And we have um, some specials on our large dogs. So you may want to come on down and take a look and find your forever friend. Thank you so much. And we will see you next Friday here at the Houston SPCA. Signing off, I'm Dr. Roberta Westbrook. Nice to talk to you.